Okay, marketplaces where it all comes down to. So let's uh, uh, touch base with the marketplace uh, very quickly. 40 Oil PLC uh, reported its first quarter 2019 numbers showing revenue about uh, almost 40 billion naira, according to what we're getting uh, on the wire right now. Operating profits for the first three months of this year came in about 98.64%. That's touching the doorsteps of 3.1 billion naira. And according to reports, these. Uh, Energy company will be paying one naira 15 cobo special cash dividend, and that money is coming through to shareholders, every shareholder of 40 Oil, because the company is making some divestments. You've heard the news over the last few days that 40 Oil is selling off its stake in Amperion, uh, 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 which is a, uh, an SSP, which is a share sale. Uh, agreement uh, selling off uh, Amperion and selling off also his business in upstream, which you call the oil uh, upstream where oil production is being made. So selling off uh, the upstream business and Amperion Energy out of his portfolio uh, is making this uh, payment, special dividend, special cash dividend. One era 15 cover is what you get as a special dividend from 40 oil because of those divestments, the company reporting 3 billion naira in operating profit for the first three months of 2019. We'll get more perspectives on that later on the program, but let's uh, continue uh, the discussion around some of the big stories around the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit. NFIU is now uh, tightening the news on what you call corruption and money laundering issues among others within states and local governments. This is the first time that we're having this agency breathing down the neck of state governments. Over the last two days, the agency published new guidelines saying all allocations from the federal government should no longer go into the accounts of state government, but straight to the accounts of the local government. Local governments are also being screwed a little bit, and they have been told they can no longer withdraw more than 500,000 naira per day in cash withdrawal Every other thing should be done by check and electronic fund transfer. Is this the fiscal reform we'll be looking for? Is this opening the door, as it were? Let's ask Paul Alaji, who is a senior economist at SPA Professionals. Uh, it's live to us from Abuja Studios. Good morning, Paul. Can we get in on this conversation? Very interesting. My ears are tickled when and I saw millions of Nigerians be looking at what is NFIU up to? It's been there all these years within EFCC. Now NFIU is serving a notice, a guideline on EFCC and ICPC and the central bank and saying, look, we're coming hard on the finances of states and local governments. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. I believe that NFIU have um, finally found the cover that has been missing on the bottle of corruption. Uh, most of the corruption, according to the guideline published and the report sent by NFIU, has been coming from that state local government joint account in which there is little or no audit or regarding the account. So this is what NFIU is, is saying, in breaking it down. For any form of transaction to take place by any local government, such transactions, such funds first must go directly to local government accounts which affects federal government even in this case, what it means is that you cannot pay, state, uh, pay the state fund bank for local government. And NFIU seems to have set the date for 1st of June. How much of compliance will get from federal government from 1st of June as against Section 162, Subsection 8, is what we we'll hope to well, see in the Paul, coming period. This is very Apart interesting. That, this is interesting, draws, Paul. Paul, please allow me to interject very quickly here. Uh, let's get this straight. Local governments had been complaining, uh, well, albeit very quietly and subtly, that state governments are cleaning up their accounts. They're not getting these allocations. The Constitution says under the FARC that you need to share the federation accounts between the federal, state, and local government. So the federal government takes its own and put it in the Ministry of Finance, right? The Ministry of Finance takes its own share, put it in the central bank. Then you have uh, the state governments collecting on behalf of the local government. So, and they, they don't get the remittances, the folks at the local government. So, as we are speaking right now, who do you think will be smiling? State governors or local government chairmen? Well, I think local government chairmen should be smiling 
and state government should be grumbling. Uh, there seems to be a section of the Constitution, uh, section 162 as amended, 162 subsection 8 as amended, that empowers state government to distribute revenue to local government. That particular section of the Constitution, I believe the legal luminary uh, in the coming period may have more jobs to do, as I believe that some state government may want to kick against this move that I think uh, we lead, we help in uh, making Nigeria, particularly of national government more transparent and to know what is done with the fund. A lot of dangers when we leave the allocation, we fund the financial allocation of local government to state government to dispense. You realize that a few years ago when the National Assembly reiterated the fact that uh, education, particularly primary education, should be the responsibility of local government. NUT uh, went, went on street in protest and in fact one in strike upon one in strike that they would prefer to be with the state government rather than being uh, with the local government as against what the Act of National Assembly, which was eventually signed into law, has said. Because the revenue for local government is highly unpredictable. They are all at the mercy of most of the state gov governors. Why this does not affect the entire federation? But larger proportion of the state government today seems to uh, be warehousing the revenue uh, that is meant for local government. How much of audit has taken place in local government government is what we don't know. And most investors around the world will not come to a country where financial transparency is a big issue. So NFIU is working mm -hmm. on financial mm -hmm. transparency mm -hmm. for the country. This is part of what the NFIU pushed out, if you just go by media reports over the last two days, that transparency in, 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 in what you call sub, at some national levels becomes a little bit very opaque lack in transparency for I investors who want to come in and deal with the critical socioeconomic issues at the local government levels, which are called the municipals uh, at the lower level. They can find it because it's the governor who sits at the godfather uh, across the state and local governments become errand boys in the manner of speaking. You hardly hear them these days anyway. So the state governor is the one who's commissioning all the roads and portholes and toilets and pipe on water in every local government, university, uh, local government uh, chairman now sit at the back, maybe somewhere very far back. You sometimes you ever hardly know if we have local government chairman at all. So they just collect salaries. So, uh, now in terms of revenue, the local governments generate this IGR. I'll give it to the governor and his government at the state house, where, and his state governor who is looking like a good guy uh, there. But salaries are not paid down the line. This is an issue here that, so is this the fiscal reforms that we've been talking about, is this opening that door with what the NFIU is doing? Yes, it's the beginning of uh, a good fiscal reform. Uh, that's what I believe NFIU is doing. And I also hope that different stakeholders in politics, in finance, and also um, civil society, we, we support NFIU in this move. When this is done, most of the crises we are fighting, we are witnessing, I beg your pardon, are the remote parts of the country today, aka kidnapping, banditry, etc., etc. It is because most fund that belongs to government, you see, the ideology here is that government fund is free fund and people can do anything with it. So you wonder how much AK-47 is sold. And uh, why has it decided to litter, it's been littered all around the remote part of our country today? Why has kidnapping become so popular among states that seems to be very religious and has, has spoken vehemently against, against kidnapping? Apart from poverty, penury, unemployment, uh, one of the reasons why we might still be having that is financing. Where exactly, what exactly, or where are we having, who is responsible for sponsoring, for as a sponsor, I beg your pardon, who has been person sponsoring a uh, crisis or say kidnapping or say banditry in Nigeria? That, among other things, could be the reason why NFIU is saying, hey, wait a minute. All funds meant for local government must go to specific or particular local government account, 
Number two, for local government to spend, we want to be sure that we are following the money. And this we guarantee that funds are meant for the specific purposes uh, with which they've been withdrawn. It will not be a case where the local government chairman and now becomes more lord as we witness among the state government state governors this moment today. Okay, so local governments too, uh, even though you said the local government chairman will be, well, happy if they get this through uh, to have their money directly from the federal government, but again, they can't touch it as it were, quote unquote, because the NFIU new guideline says, as a local government chairman, you can withdraw more than 500,000 naira per day uh, in, in cash withdrawal. Uh, every other thing you got to do by check, so it's bringing check back into, uh, into play. And of course, all you do electronic front transfer, you want to track the money. So you talk about insecurity at the very local government, villages and townships level on a daily basis, dozens of lives being lost in the country. So is, do you think, uh, would NFIU is looking at trace the money, then you'll be able to get to the crime? Yes, I strongly believe uh, there are different levels of uh, money laundry. Is it by layering? Is it by integration? There are different levels of uh, laundry money uh, outside and within the country. And I believe that if you can cut the supply of funds uh, to those who are the warlords or those who are kidnappers or those who are uh, uh, fomenting trouble all around the place and taking, putting a pause to the peace Nigeria has enjoyed over the years, you might as well be bringing peace in a way. So for me and for our organization, we strongly believe that if we can follow financial discipline and transparency, we will soon witness peace in some headquarters. That does not mean that corruption might be zero, but to a large extent, the biggest type of corruption which people have described as the big fish if we can monitor how funds are spent and for which purpose we're spending this money. To a large extent, we strongly believe that transparency and financial discipline, as well as peace, may eventually reign in Nigeria. So, if you, so still sticking with the insecurity issue, uh, you remember, and I'm sure you remember, uh, weeks and, and months ago when uh, uh, Mr. President uh, Muhammad Buhari was pushing for uh, taking NFIU out of the EFCC and making it a stand-alone uh, agency. There were a few other guys because Nigerians got blacklisted back then because they believe that uh, our financial whatever is, is opaque and there's a need to have that transparency uh, and taking NFIU out of the EFCC. Do you think this is now, uh, this move by the NFIU begins to justify Mr. President's um, idea that the NFIU needs to be separate? and be an independent agency with its own structure and someone at the head of it. Yeah, um, I, I strongly believe so. And beyond uh, uh, Mr. President pushing for that, most countries that have developed today have their independent uh, financial intelligence units, just as we have NFIU in Nigeria. So we want to have development on one side. We want to keep on in our scene on the other side. And we cannot ask for grace to abandon. If you want grace, then you cannot continue in sin. Of course, we are able, we, our sins can be forgiven, but we shouldn't continue in them. So I've said all of that to say that it is good that the act for NFIU has been signed to law by Mr. President, and he has pushed for that. What we now need to do is the pains that some persons might claim that this will cost them. If this pain at the end of the day, we mean good, we mean more jobs at the local government level, more jobs at the world level because projects will now be embarked on by local government. Who knows where the shoe pinch is the most, particularly those that are, uh, th those, those that are disgruntled, those that are the very poor, those that do not have the privilege to live in Lagos or live in Abuja, to live in uh, some, the, some of the best parts of the country, but they've decided to stay in Arkila in Sokoto where they believe that some miracle, economic miracle of some sort will happen on them. Signing, I mean, implementing this guideline will mean the local government head or the local government executive or the local government as it were should take responsibility for making government closer to them, which was what the constitution envisaged when Nigeria said we need to create another government at another level, which is the third tier of government called the local government. 
government. But you see, when state governors are still responsible for appointing administrators at the local government and not allowing, giving, not giving the people the benefits of appointing, of electing those who will govern them and manage this fund, all of these exercises that NFIU is starting might just be uh, not, uh, not, not going to come out the so, way we all expect it to be. Yes, I think we should allow democracy to play its course and yeah. allow even election to be the process of appointing. I, I just want to ask, do you think this is uh, somehow uh, be a political gain for the country's democracy? There are some reports of some state governments where local government elections have hardly been held. And of course, uh, if you're holding the local government elections, unless the, the governor, the man at the governor's lodge, uh, signs off on certain names, you're not likely to get elected. Uh, as a local government chairman or even for Manesco. So, uh, do you think this is what you call both financial and political freedom? Yes, I, I think so, strongly. I believe it's a financial and political freedom. And federal government might even want to take a step further, uh, depending if there is the will, that if you don't have elected local government uh, executive in your local government, we will hold on your fund until election takes place in your state. Then we'll release to the newly elected officers. Uh, it's a tough one, but it's a good one. So that all state gov governors would not uh, influence or want to intrude in local government election. Let the wish of the people stand. Let those that the people have elected be the one to govern their affairs, particularly at the local government. It is easier to say that federal government is influencing the state so much, but the state is not looking at those they are influencing their decision and not allowing the wish of the people uh, to prevail even within their domain. Okay, so for to whom much is given, much will be expected. So this is a freedom to local government, so congratulations, guys. But do you think the NFIU, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, should go f a step further now compelling local governments to publish their annual statements, financial statements? Yeah, I haven't, well, I haven't, no, I haven't, seen, no, one, I haven't no. seen any in decades. Yes, I, I agree with you. There is no point having fund or access to fund without retiring it. Um, as it's compulsory for a whole limited liability company to, to present a statement of account or uh, is uh, audited account, I beg your pardon, to the tax authority, the same way it should be compulsory for local government to publish public accounts. So the public, not just to NFIU, but make it available to the public to be sure that you have done justice. And that environment, and I'm happy that you, there is actually anywhere in Nigeria today with high level of illiteracy, we still have considerable number of literacy, even in remote parts of the country. And I know Nigeria, particularly civil society in Nigeria, we ask questions when such publication take place. So I support and I also I believe that the NFIU should mandate, it should be part of the guideline, if it's not done, it should be what should be considered in the coming period, publishing the financial status and the financial statements and transactions by all local government so that we don't see this as another window of, of corruption. Paul Jay, Senior Economist at SPA Professionals, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate your insight and perspectives on the latest development. Thank you so much. Mm. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Forty Oil is just announcing a special dividend, one naira fifteen kobo, to every shareholder on the back of his latest divestments. All of that we're taking that to the marketplace, plus your green bond listing.